Hi my salty pecans and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi my name is Pamela. And on today's video I'm going to be sharing with you all, all of the fertilizers that I use in my plant collection on my plants to help them grow, to help them bloom, to help provide extra nutrients that soil solely cannot provide them. So if you're interested in the fertilizers that I'm going to be mentioning, then keep on watching. So welcome back everyone. Alright, before we even get into the products that I use, I want to mention what is a fertilizer? What is a fertilizer? What does it do? What are the benefits? And how can you read numbers on the products when you're purchasing it in order to know which exact fertilizer to purchase? So what is a fertilizer? A fertilizer is a product when applied to the soil or the tissue of the plant, helps supplies it with nutrients to aid in the growth process. It basically increases the fertility of the plant. Fertility can be seen as the fertileness of the plant in order to get new leaves, the fertileness of the plant to grow flowers, the fertility aka growth. That is what a fertilizer is and that is what fertilizers do and how they operate. Sometimes when you see a fertilizer you'll see these random little numbers. That is the NPK of the plant. What is NPK? NPK is the amount of macronutrients that are used by your plants. So in humans, we have our own macronutrients, which is just like the fiber, which is the proteins. Plants also have their own macronutrients that they need in order to help it grow better. The N in NPK stands for nitrogen. The P in NPK stands for phosphorus. The K in NPK stands for potassium. The higher number of the NPK means that it has a higher concentration. So if you see a fertilizing product that has an NPK of zero, that means it's low concentration. But if you see something with an NPK of seven, of 10, of 20, of 30, then that means that has a higher concentration of either the nitrogen, the phosphorus, or the potassium. The N in NPK stands for nitrogen, and nitrogen helps with growth, new growth, foliage growth. That is what nitrogen helps promote. The P is for phosphorus. Phosphorus helps with flowering plants, fruiting plants, and also root growth. The K, which is potassium, helps regulate osmosis and enzyme production. So now that you know what a fertilizer is and how to read the fertilizing products, I am going to start mentioning the fertilizers that I use in my collection. Some are natural and some are chemicals, so do beware I am going to be mentioning the chemical ones and also mentioning the more natural fertilizers. The first fertilizer I'm going to be mentioning is actually eggshells. These are used eggshells after I cook whatever I'm doing, if I'm baking, if I'm making breakfast, if I'm boiling an egg, I save the eggshells. Eggshells contain calcium carbonate, CaCO3, which helps regulate growth and development in plants. If you'd like, you can definitely use organic eggshells, but you can use any eggshells because it is the components of the eggshell that's more important and less how organic the product is, but more organic, the better. Eggshells also contain phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, to name a few macronutrients. And it also contains small levels of sodium, which is safe enough for your plants. How I use eggshells is after I, you know, crack the egg, I toss it in the sink and I clean it fully. I remove any of the residue, any of the baby bird situation that's happening inside, and I let it dry out. Some people, they actually bake the eggshells. You don't have to. I just let it air dry. Once it's dry, I then place it in a grinder and I pulverize this into a powder. That powder is what I then mix with water and I use it for plants that have a calcium deficiency or plants that prefer more of a higher calcium sort of fertilizer. For example, my Hoyer macrophylla is a plant that I use eggshells on to help promote happier growth. You can also just dry your eggshells, crush them, and lay them on top of 
your soil as a powdery substance you don't have to mix it in water if you have plants that are more on the thirsty side you can actually crush eggshells and lay them at the bottom of the soil and also lay them in the middle of the soil for plants that are more thirsty eggshells are good for tomato plants they're good for a certain type of hoya so definitely do your research in the specific plant that you are looking to fertilize so eggshells is the first one that I am mentioning so the next fertilizer I'm mentioning are actually fertilizer spikes. I love fertilizer spikes but I don't use them much anymore in my collection because I have gone for more specific, more serious sort of fertilizers. But if you're a beginning plant parent, someone who doesn't really have time to be mixing and diluting products, fertilizer spikes are really easy, they're really just no-brainer, just stick them inside of the soil and keep it pushing. Every time you water your plant, the fertilizer will slowly release into the soil and aid in that consistent fertilization that it wants without you again having to remember to add extra fertilizer in the water. The next fertilizer that I use in my collection is actually liquid dirt. I love this product. Well, not me personally, but my plants absolutely love this product. This is something that I use in essentially every single watering session. My plants love it. It's really easy. You just follow the directions depending on how often you want to water your plant. If it's a house plant, if it's a vegetable herb garden, if it's lawn and tree care. Liquid Dirt contains 18 nutrient systems that are fully digestible from your plants. Again, if you go on their website, it gives you the list of all the amazingness. It has like bad guana in it. Like, ugh, keep that away from me. But my plants love it. A huge plus of this product is that it's natural. So you can use this in your edible garden in your non-edible gardens this thing is just safe to use around older people around children around animals but of course do not consume this because it's a plant product don't consume it so yeah. the next fertilizing product that I do use in my collection has to be worm casting what is worm casting worm casting is basically just a mass of soil a mass of feces that were once released by the worms the worms in compost consume whatever you put in there whether it could be eggshells it could be just banana peels the worms will then consume it it goes through its digestive process and the poop <laughs> that the worms poop out is inside of here the great thing about worm casting is that with the process that the worms go through of digestion it removes heavy metals so it makes your fertilizer metal free which is even better for your plants similarly to eggshells worm casting does contain a whole bunch of macronutrients like phosphorus magnesium potassium nitrogen and its pH balance which is a pH of 7 it's neutral which is again even better for your plants plants are very iffy if you have it too acidic it can kill your plant if you have it too basic it can kill your plant neutral is always best so worm casting the best since pH is neutral it will help offset the acidity of the soil and again since I mentioned it's natural it will not burn the roots of your plants like I mentioned about the NPK you see the number here it's one zero zero so that means that nitrogen is a one the phosphorus is a zero and the potassium is a zero aquarium water Yes, aquarium water is the next fertilizer that I use in my home for my plants. Depending on the day, if I am cleaning my fish tank on that day, what I'll do is I'll siphon extra water into a gallon and save it for my next watering day. Aquarium water, aka liquid golden poo is what they call it. It contains nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, ammonia, and a whole bunch of microorganisms. One thing I can say about aquarium water is to avoid adding salt in your water. If you are someone who has brackish fish, brackish water, do not use anything that has saline salt in your soil because you will kill your plants salty water will kill your plants so try to leave your water to be salt free neutral unsalted no salt water another warning that i can say is if you are trying to use aquarium water and you use some chemicals that remove algae beware again not to use that water because algae is a plant and if you're using products to kill algae and then you're going to use that same water that has algae killer and you're going to pour it in your plant, you're going to kill your plant. You know what I mean? So stay 
away from algae killers if you use that in your water don't use that to water your plants but aquarium water is the best the most natural fertilizers that you can use on your plants since I mentioned aquarium water I'm going to mention fish emulsion fish emulsion is literally aquarium water except in a bottle this like I showed you has the NPK so nitrogen is 5 phosphorus is 1 potassium is 1 I absolutely love this product I have not used this in a minute because I have so many other fertilizers that I rotate in and out of but at the end of the day I try to keep my fertilizers within the same safe range within the same safe zone I try not to get anything that's excessive so that I know I can use it for all of my plants I can use it on a cactus I can use it on Hoyas I can use it on Archaeas Good stuff. Another fertilizer that I use is actually Osmocot. Osmocot, similarly to the fertilizer spikes, is a slow release fertilizer. So what I do with Osmocot is I actually just like pour it on top of anything like I freshly repot or on plants that are older. For example, with my golden pothos, what I would do is put a little bit of Osmocot on the top water it and watch every single water this will be slowly released into your plant i love osmocot if you look at the npk of this particular product right here it says 15 9 12 so the n is 15 the p is 9 and the k is 12. the last fertilizer i'm going to be mentioning is actually this orchid fertilizer I love orchid fertilizer not only for orchid plants but I also love using orchid fertilizer on Hoyas this in my opinion really does help with promotion of flowers promoting of happier bushier healthier plants so I will have every single product that I'm going to be mentioning listed down below linked down below the NPK of this is 0 0.2 0 0.2 0.2 so it's completely even across the board so this I go ahead and just spray my foliage this is a foliar spray a lot of the other ones were soil additives but this is a foliar fertilizer foliar means foliage so you spray the foliage directly in order to fertilize it if you're interested in using liquid dirt I actually do have a coupon code for 25% off of your entire order using my name Pamela Pierre P-A-M-E-L-L-A P-I-E-R-R-E -R -R -E, on their website to again get 25% off of your entire purchase which is huge which is huge because who wouldn't want to save 25% off of your purchase so my salty peeps those were all of the fertilizers that I personally use in my collection if there are any that you use that I should actually look into definitely let me know down below but other than that like I mentioned everything will be linked down below any products that I mentioned will be in the description box so with that being said, thank you so much my Salty Pecans for watching this video. If you liked it, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up and sharing. Subscribe if you aren't already. Join this little cookie family because we're pretty awesome here. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to be notified every single time I upload a new video. And I will see you on the next one. Let's get growing. Bye!